American scientists have successfully grown and attached a human ear onto the back of a mouse. The ethics are controversial. From wolfins, ligers, and zonkeys to mice with human brain cells, these are hybrid animals created by scientists you won't believe exist. The first one sounds silly, but wolfins. So this is when you combine a false killer whale with a common bottlenose dolphin, a wolfin. Sure, most of you assumed it was an actual whale combined with a dolphin, which is fair. Though I gotta admit, when I first heard of this, there was a small part of my brain at least I hope a small part, that briefly thought it might have, have meant a wolf mixed with a dolphin, which, um, yikes. This is a uh, wolfin right here, Kekimailu at Sea Life Park in Hawaii. That's mainly where you find these hybrids. They're usually created in captivity, specifically for marine parks or aquariums, because it's an attraction. It's not great, especially because there's already a lot of ethical issues with animals being held in captivity at places like this, so you know they could do tricks for people. Breeding these dolphins isn't something that would happen in the wild, since false killer whales and bottlenose dolphins are very different in terms of behavior and geography. It has been known to happen rarely, but not very often. In captivity, human intervention makes it very possible though. Wolfins often deal with health problems and have a higher mortality rate compared to their parents. It's another example of humans messing with nature for novelty's sake, and it rarely ends well for the animals involved. Human-animal hybrid chimeras. Yes, this sounds like something out of a movie, but it's very much real. These are creatures created by combining human and animal cells, leading to beings that have both human and animal parts. Imagine a pig with human brain cells or a sheep with some human DNA. It might sound wild and highly unethical, but this kind of research does have its benefits, especially in areas like stem cell research and organ transplantation. For example, scientists hope that growing human cells in animals could eventually lead to growing human organs for transplants, but it does raise concerns, mainly with the extent to which we mix human and animal DNA. In the US, the Human Animal Chimera Prohibition Act was introduced in 2016 to address the these concerns. The bill aimed to prohibit creating these hybrid organisms, as well as transferring human embryos into non-human animals' wombs. The bill didn't pass, but it's clear that people are pretty divided on this issue. We'll have a few cases of human-animal hybrids on this list, including this next one. A human combined with a chimpanzee. Seems like something that could work, right? I mean, they were already so genetically similar. In 1967, scientists in Shenyang, China, supposedly managed to impregnate a chimpanzee with human sperm. The goal was to create a more advanced chimp that might be able to speak and even go to space for experiments. Now, this story is hard to verify, but according to the scientists involved, the chimp did get pregnant carrying a human-chimp hybrid. Unfortunately, the chimp died after three months and the lab was destroyed during the Cultural Revolution. So no human Z ever came to be. It's a crazy idea, but considering we share 98.8% of our DNA with chimps, who knows what could have happened here. Could have had a whole new species on our hands. Still, it's hard to say if this story is true or just a wild scientific rumor. Next up, let's talk about the zonkey. Again, this sounds very silly, like something from a Dr. Seuss book, but these things have and do exist. A zonkey is the offspring of a male zebra and a female donkey, or vice versa. Though you can also get variations from horses, resulting in names like Zors or Zedonk. Now, these things aren't as bad. They're cute, for one, and they do seem like a fun kind of creature to create, but there are some ethical concerns here, too. One of the biggest issues is that these hybrids are often sterile, meaning they can't reproduce naturally. That raises the question, what's the point of breeding them, then? It's not, it's not like they're able to create a sustainable population, and on top of that, hybrids often suffer from health problems due to the combination of genetic traits. The whole thing can feel like breeding animals for novelty or profit rather than for any real purpose. There's no clear benefit to society having these creatures around other than as a bizarre curiosity, and again, they are pretty cute. Rabbit-human hybrids. Yes, this was a thing. Back in 2003, scientists in Shanghai managed to fuse human cells into rabbit eggs in a lab, and it worked. These embryos survived for a time long enough to be harvested for stem cells, but no one really knows how long they could have lived or if they would have developed past the embryo stage. Imagine a world where, right now, there's this 21-year-old 
half human, half rabbit creature out there in Shanghai, I guess. Scientists never let it develop further, possibly because the idea of a rabbit human hybrid was just too freaky. Or maybe they did continue the experiments in secret. Who knows? There could be entire underground labs full of these creatures just waiting to hop away. Picture it a mangy, almost hairless rabbit with a human face. Or maybe don't picture it if you want to sleep, that is. Mice with human livers. This one's actually kind of fascinating. Back in 2010, researchers at the Salk Institute of Biological Studies in California managed to genetically modify a mouse so that it grew an almost human-like liver. Why? Well, it was part of an effort to create a more ethical way to test diseases that primarily affect humans and chimpanzees. Diseases like hepatitis B, C, and malaria. In the past, scientists would have had to use chimps for this kind of testing, but with these modified mice, they could still run similar experiments just on mice. Testing on animals is never ideal, but it's still a huge step in the right direction. You know, reducing the need for primates. These mice with their human livers could be used to study human-specific diseases and try out treatments that might work on us. It's a pretty big deal in the medical field and could lead to real breakthroughs in treatment and prevention. It's gonna bring us to another mouse-related hybrid. This time, it's mice with human brains. Yeah, it turns out we actually got pretty close to making Pinky and the Brain uh, come true before our eyes. Uh, don't we all want that? I think sometimes scientists just figure like, you know, why not? Let's just do it. Back in 2014, though, scientists were able to imbue several lab mice with millions of human brain cells. The mice lived, too. After about a year, almost every cell in their brains was replaced by human ones. Now, my human brain automatically goes to these mice now performing uh, complex math equations, uh, doing dance routines talking. Unfortunately, that's not what happened, but their memory got way better, which is still cool. The way the scientists tested this was by playing a certain noise. Then they'd send a small electric shock through the mice. The next time they played the sound, they took note of how the mice reacted. The ones with human brain cells would remember that electric shock came after the sound and they'd brace for it. The regular mice wouldn't. They just couldn't make that connection. Ligers. No, these are not just from Napoleon Dynamite. A liger is the offspring of a male lion and a female tiger. And while they are pretty cool to look at because of they're just huge and the fact they kind of look like a fantasy creature, they tend to have some serious health issues. Ligers can grow to lengths of 10 to 12 feet and weigh up to 900 pounds. And that much size puts a huge strain on their bodies, especially their organs and bones. Their hearts also have a hard time supporting such a large frame. And on top of that, their size can cause difficulty in breathing, arthritis, and a short lifespan compared to their wild parents. But the real ethical issue with ligers is how they're bred. They don't occur naturally in the wild, meaning these creatures are made in captivity purely for novelty and profit. Two-headed dogs, not your typical hybrid, but equally disturbing. This experiment comes from Vladimir Demikov, a Soviet scientist who was pushing the boundaries of surgery back in the 40s and 50s. He was a real life mad scientist who would do crazy experiments, like he'd keep a dog's head alive for hours, completely separate from the, the body. He'd surgically, and of course, he'd surgically attach the head of one dog onto another, creating a real life two headed dog. His goal was to explore organ transplantation and see how the body would react to these extreme surgeries. His work was groundbreaking in the medical world, but my God, was it creepy. Creating these bizarre creatures for the sake of scientific curiosity without considering their well being is incredibly cruel, obviously. And these dogs didn't live long after the surgeries, and it's hard not to look at these. It's hard to look at these creatures without feeling deeply uncomfortable. It was an early example of what happens when the desire to push scientific boundaries crosses into disturbing, morally questionable territory. With all that said, I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.